Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to yet another FNAF news video. Once again, it's been quite a while since we last talked about some FNAF news, so we've got a lot to go over in today's video. Before we hop into the news, you know the deal, alright, line up, let's figure it out. Who's not subscribed? Oh, it's you? You're not subscribed to the channel? Yeah, I bet. Can't imagine being part of the 80 to 90%, that's right, 80 to 90% of the people who watch me who aren't subscribed. Seriously, people, we're trying to get to 50 50k by the end of the year. Come on, subscribe already. Also, hit the like button. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's move on to the FNAF news and let's kick it off by talking about some brand new merchandise. We got a bunch of brand new Security Breach themed shirts exclusive to Hot Topic revealed over the past couple weeks. The first shirt is of the Security Breach logo on a plain black t-shirt. The second one is another plain black tee with a neon sign design on the front of the chibi heads of the Glamrock animatronics and also security breach at the top with some other writing across on the side. The third one is this one. Now Twitter had a field day <laughs> the day this got revealed because it's a cool design but the execution of the faces for the sun and the moon are just very strange to say the least. So if you're a fan of Sun and Moon and were hoping you'd get some quality merchandise of them, well, you got merchandise. I wouldn't quite say it's quality, but there you go. And finally, we got a singing Glamrock Freddy with a interesting FNAF Security Breach logo in the top left. That's got to be the weirdest FNAF logo I've ever seen in my life. You got Five Nights, the at symbol, Freddy's in not the FNAF font by the way that's not the font they use for the logo and also security breach once again that's not the font they use for the game's logo so I don't know what the heck's going on with that but the drawing of Freddy singing is pretty cool then you've got some remember to smile socks featuring the chibi head of Glamrock Freddy and looks like on the bottom of the socks it says they're watching I believe everything we just looked at is going to be exclusive to Hot Topic so if you're interested in any of those products you know where to look Moving on now to some books, we actually got a brand new cover for the graphic novel collection volume 2 for the Fazbear Fright series. Right off the bat, it may be difficult to spot the difference with this new cover, but actually the Minorinas now have an endoskeleton, which compared to the old cover where they didn't have an endoskeleton, nor any teeth, this new one definitely looks a lot, a lot better in my opinion. Then, I forgot to talk about this in the last FNAF news video, but the description for the fourth uh, Tales from the Pizzaplex book, Submechanophobia, has actually changed. The second story in the description got a little bit of a update. Originally, it was taking some creative liberties in a series of articles for his school newspaper shows Drew that truth really can be stronger than fiction. And the new one goes, Tony search for the player behind the impossibly high scores at the pizza Plex, Fazcade leads him down a rabbit hole with no way out. Now what's interesting about this change is that in the game security breach, I believe Gregory himself has the highest scores on the arcade machine's leaderboards. So could we be getting a story that actually involves the main protagonist of security breach Gregory? gonna have to wait and find out. And speaking of FNAF books, since the last time we made a FNAF news video, two brand new books have released, and that is the second Tales from the Pizzaplex book, Haps, and also the Security Breach Files book. So these two are out right now, if you want to go pick them up, feel free to. Moving on now to some merchandise collaborations. First up, we got some brand new teases for the third wave of Hex plushies. In one of Daco's latest videos, he showed off a quick teaser of Balloon Boy's propeller hat. At, which, just like we talked about last time, does actually spin. And he did clarify that Balloon Boy will not be holding a real balloon, which makes sense. I can definitely see some issues attaching a real balloon onto a plush, but hey, the propeller spins and that's all I care about. Then we also got a quick drawing of the Toy Bonnie plushie with his guitar, and then an actual teaser of the real Toy Bonnie plushie. And you can actually see the tip of his guitar right off to the side of his head. That is a quick look at the upcoming Wave 3 Hex plushies. In other merchandise collaborations news, we've got Cloak back in the news. You may remember on FNAF's anniversary, they hinted that they may be doing another 
merchandise wave with FNAF. And lo and behold, that has come true. They released a video a couple days ago announcing that on September 29th, they're going to be hosting an IRL meetup with Daco and also CG5, where they're going to be revealing some exclusive products of the brand new wave of FNAF merch with Cloak. And also, it seems like this wave will be dropping on September the 30th. And don't worry, it's going to be online too. You can go to the actual Cloak website and get it there. It's not going to be exclusive to this IRL event. But yeah, a lot of people involved with the collaboration have been teasing the various products. Like CG5, you can also see um, AJ from the Random Encounters and also Deregular Sauce with his amazing Glamrock Freddy cosplay. But you can see Charlie wearing a brand new Cloak X FNAF t-shirt new drop and in some of the videos you can see more t-shirts and also a beanie on top of sauce and also someone stole freddy's legs and put on the brand new cloak and fnaf pants so yeah very exciting the last time we had a cloak drop uh stuff sold out pretty quick so i'd say if you're excited if you're looking forward to some more products I definitely say save up. Moving on now to the Fazbear Fanverse, we got some brand new Pop Goes Evergreen news by Kane Carter, which by the way, as this video comes out today, it's actually his birthday, so why don't we all wish Kane Carter a happy birthday in the comments? But he put out a tweet the other day saying, Work has begun on an entirely new set of characters for Evergreen, for the enigmatic post-night section. I've been designing them with Tigra and Alexis modeling them. Really happy with what we've got so far, might do a reveal on Halloween. So very, very exciting. An entirely new set of animatronics that are going to be showing up in the post-night sections of Pop Goes Evergreen. He also showed off one of the scrapped phone skins. This is the chocolate skin. He says, though 50 phones are planned for Evergreen, we've still had to scrap some ideas. Here's one, a phone made out of chocolate. Mm, looks delicious, but it was ultimately a little too chunky for the game. However, I wouldn't be too upset because while they may have scrapped the chocolate skin, they definitely haven't scrapped the phone unit skin. Most of the unlockable phones in Evergreen are just very sexy recolors, but some of them have unique cases, so I thought I'd show off one phone unit. Though trading cards are canon, unlockable phones are not, which means we can do stuff like this. Oh, he looks so good. Everyone's favorite hand unit in a phone case form. I love it. It seriously, seriously looks so goddamn good. So you do have phone unit to look forward to in Pop Goes Evergreen. Moving on to U2s, they showed off a brand new pin of a glittery Golden Freddy in a VIP chair. Now, a lot of people are saying that this is going to be for promoting the FNAF movie because he's in a director's chair. I think that is crazy crazy assumptions to make. However, what's exciting is that there will most likely be even more FNAF pins, because whenever uh, YouTubes do pins, they actually come in a set. As you can see right here, this is the Rami J. Schlatt pin set, and it's a group of five pins. So it just seems likely that we'd get four other FNAF pins in a set with the Golden Freddy one. And speaking of YouTubes, can we get a Salute in chat because the Pop Goes Candy and Ignited Freddy figures have officially sold out. Which is absolutely crazy. It wasn't even 10 days. They sold out so, so, so quick. We can only hope that they do more Fanverse merchandise in the future because, I mean, if these guys sold out this quick, hopefully YouTubes are like, hmm... Maybe we should do a bit more. If you weren't able to get any of the Fanverse YouTube's products, don't worry. There are still some other Fanverse products that you can get right now. That's right. There he is. The Funko Fanverse plushies are now actually available. You can order them online. Pop Goes and Candy haven't shipped out yet for anyone, I've heard. But, <laughs> but Blake has. Look at the dude. <laughs> I won't turn this into a review video, but this is the Blake Funko plushie, and also there is the Fanverse Funko tag. So yeah, if you missed out on the U2s, at least you can now get the Funko plushies. And that, ladies and gents, is going to do it for today's FNAF News video. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and I will see you on the flip side. Goodbye.